hello everyone so in this tutorial i will teach you how to build your very own ai dumbbell shoulder press trainer i will begin everything from scratch so that anyone familiar with the basis of python programming can follow along we'll write the code in such a way that is going to be reusable in future we'll find the angle between the two hands and based on this angle we will count whether the hand is up or down so this works with only two hands and not one so as you can see when you raise one hand it will not count it only counts when both hands are up we we'll also test this with our webcam feed so stay along to the end and let's learn something new Okay guys, so before you go right into coding, I've noticed that most of my viewers haven't yet subscribed. So you guys should do well to subscribe and also share the channel to your friends so that we can cover a lot of audience. So enough with this self-promotion though, let's get right into it and start to code. Okay, so we'll first start by importing our libraries, but before that let me introduce the files we'll be using in this particular project. We'll be using this media pipe image. So these are the points on the human body. So we'll be referencing this image as time goes on. And also I have the video file I did myself. So I took a video of myself, which will try and detect this point on. We'll do it on a live camera too. So those are the files we'll be using. Apart from that, now we have to go ahead and import our libraries. So as usual, we we'll use the OPCV library. So we we'll import CV2. We we'll also use NumPy as well. So I think we have to import NumPy as NumPy as MP. And we we'll use the mass module. So let's import mass. Then finally, the post detection, we use the CV zone library. So we say from CV zone, we are going to import the post detector. Detector, right. So we have imported the OPCV library. We have imported NumPy, the mass library, and the post detector from the CV zone library. So these are the four main libraries we'll be using in this particular project. Now the next step is to go ahead and get our feed from the camera as usual. So you know if you have been following along, it's very simple. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll explain each line for you guys. Alright guys, so I went ahead and written the code we need to open our webcam and in here we are just creating a capture object, we are giving it our camera in this. So if you have multiple cameras hook, what you have to just do is to try from 0 on, 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on to get the particular camera you want to work in. Then since we are taking it frame by frame, we created a while loop, while 1 here which is the same as while true. Then we are taking our image here this red variable here shows absence of uh, image or video or not so in, in case you have no video feed it will be zero so it's a boolean actually then here we are just reading into our image after reading we have to show it so we can see it so we are showing it with this line cv2.im show then the last line here we are just waiting taking each frame each second so we specify one here to take it second by second this only take integers floating point numbers don't work here so i think i'll go ahead and run this so we can see all right guys so here am i in this frame you can see we are getting the feed live from the frame now so i think we are done with this step let's just close it up and continue okay so the next step now is to get our post detection on so for that we have to create a post object or we can call it pd which means post detector and this is equal to just post detector then in here you can specify some couple of parameters such as the detection confidence so detection confidence which means how confident should it be to say okay this is a human being i'm detecting a pose on it also 
so we can set this to 70 percent which is 0 0.70 so that's it we can also detect specify the tracking confidence so we can say tracking confidence and let's also set that one to 70 percent as well then i think that's well so to get our pose working we can come here and say pd dot find pose then in here you just give it your image and that's all your pose you just get your pose on so let's run it and see so you can see i'm getting my pose on you can see my hand is being detected just as the image we are going to reference here you can see the same thing if i should stand i'll be detected all around so the, the pose is working fine but now we have to go ahead and get all the points on this body so let me close this up so as you can see these are the points on the human body and they are about 32 points but all we need now is these points here the angle here so we have to take all the points now and extract the necessary points we want for our project so i think we can close this up okay so to get those points we can specify a variable let's call those points lm list or landmark list then okay it returns us with a bounding box info so we can call this one bb box which is called to pd dot find pose position so it's right here i'll just select it to find the pose position and it also takes our image and that's all so let's run this and check whether we can get some values so i can print the lm list values so that we can see so let's run this one again all right so I'm in the frame again and you can see here we have a lot of numbers so these are the 32 points we have each point has four numbers another point has four numbers so for instance if it's point 14 point 14 alone is having four numbers so you can see it's in a list it's having four numbers right so those are our landmark list so now that we've gotten the landmark list if I raise my hand it's detecting it i think we have to get rid of this box here so let's get rid of the box then we extract our landmark list so we can specify a couple of parameters here to get rid of our box such as draw so by default draw is true let's make it zero so draw is equal to zero then we will not draw and also the bounding box with Okay, that is already false, so it's already false. So let's just remove the draw and see whether the box will just go. So I run it. Okay, and right away you can see we are not having the box, so this is working fine. So let's continue to extract our point. So now the thing is, let's say we want this point here on our shoulder, maybe point twelve. How can we get it from the landmark list? So that is very simple. What we'll do is that if we want point 12, we can come here and let's let's write it point. Let, let's let's make it point. So we can just say lm list in the key of 12. So this will extract the point 12 values into our point variable so let's go ahead and print that to see whether it's working so let's say now we'll put point here and run it to see whether we are, we'll get the exact points values okay so you can see we are getting these values here which is for point 12 so that's the values we are getting and to verify this we can draw a circle with it or yeah we can draw a circle with it but as i told you earlier on between all these four values or four elements of this list the ones we need is the second and the third number so let's extract that and use that to draw let's see a circle on the body maybe we'll draw a circle on point 12 so point 12 is somewhere here on the that's your right 
so right shoulder point 12 so let's draw a circle on it to verify whether it's working i'll close this up and now what we'll do is that we have to get those points from so let's say x y h and width is equal to point so now we want the two middle ones which is y and h so let's draw a circle with y and h cv two dot circle we give it our image and then we give it our center so our center should be x and y no y and h then the next thing is the radius so let's make it let's make it 10 and our thickness or color make it blue so 255 comma 0 then let's give it a thickness of 5 to begin with so now let's see whether we are able to target that point Hola, and you can see so we have the point here with the green uh, sorry so we have the point here with the blue so we can do this process to get any points on the body so among all the 32 points we can go through all this process to get any points but what we are after now is to get these three points one two three here and also get one two three here so that's 11 13 and 15 12 14 and 16 so that we can find the angle here right so if you are able to find the angle at 13 and angle at 14 then we'll know whether your hand is either up or down based on the angle then we can decide you are up or down but the problem is if let me close this up if we said we'll do this one by one our we'll write a lot of code and it will not be reusable so i think the best approach here is to write a class and in this class we have various methods which will do this work for us so that our code will also be what reusable in the future if we just want to do something else we just pass in the points then it finds the angles for us so we'll do this class such like that we'll give it the six points we need in this case 16 14 12 11 13 15 then it will find the angle for us it will give us the two angles then based on the angles we can make decisions so let's go ahead and start with the class that means we don't need all this again let's go with the class so we'll come somewhere at the top here and to start with just say class anyways if you are not familiar with class you can read about it there are a lot of videos on youtube that teaches how this class work and also if you want me to do a tutorial about that i'll be more glad just put it in the comment section below so we call it class and i think we should call this find angle or angle finder let's call it angle finder right now we need to initialize this class so dev underscore underscore init give it self so what we'll do is that we have to give this class all this landmark list not all the ones we need so let's say we need 12 14 16 we also need 11 13 and 15 that means we need six of these so this class should take all uh, the landmark list and six points then based on these six points it's going to find our angle for us so we'll say we'll give this class we'll give it our lm list we'll also give it point one up to point six to point two point three point four all the way to point six so we'll pass all this now as usual i know you have to do self dot lm list is equal to lm list and we have to do this for all of them self dot point one is equal to point one so i'll just copy this some number of times and do it for all of them okay so now we are given this class all it needs 
I think we need the six points and also we need our what LM list so we have supplied it all then the last thing we, we can also give this class is draw so let's call it draw points draw points and then we'll come down here and say draw point separate and I'll explain that in a second so self dot draw points okay so this draw point it will be a boolean so if it's true that means we are going to draw the points on the body maybe we perform the circles on the body and also the lines connecting the points together so the user has to specify if it's, he wants something those lines to be drawn on the body then he specify one or true in absence of that he specify false so that's what it will do so the next step here is to get a method that will find the angle for us so let's go ahead and define a method so we just call this angle right and we are passing no other parameter into it now before we we can find let me open this up before we can find any points on this body we have to first check whether there is a body right because if there is no body we can't find points so if we went ahead without checking whether there is body and we are finding points it makes no sense it will just give us an error so i think we have to go ahead and just check so if self dot lm list let's say it's not or it's not equal to zero that's where we we'll go ahead and get our points so we make sure that we are getting a body before we extract this point without getting any body we are not going to extract any point so right so now how do we extract this point let's say we have points point one and this point one is equal to the self dot lm list just as we did self dot lm list in the key of the particular point we want to extract so this particular point we will pass it into this function we are passing this point into this function so let's make it generic so that it will not be like we are working for only these six points that means in future if you want to target 24 26 and 28 you just pass in that point and the code will be able to find out the angle for you so we'll say self dot lm list at point one at p1 so that's what we are going to find okay it shouldn't be p1 that means here too should be self dot p1 here self dot p1 you always use self and we have to go ahead and do this for all the points so that we'll get all the six points you want to work with so i'll do this a couple of times this is five and the last one is six so instead of point one we'll do it two three and so on and here also we are taking point two Point three, point four, and so on. So now we have gotten the points into these variables here. But you should know each point has four numbers, and we only need what the middle two. So that means we have to extract those two numbers in the middle so that we can use them. And how do we do that? So I think. For that, we can come down here and say maybe x1. Let me bring this one down. And let's come down somewhere here. And we can say x1 and y1. That's for the, the first point. We are doing it for the first point to point 1. x1, y1 is equal to point 1. And let's slice only those two numbers in it point one then we'll slice from one right all the way to we are not taking the last one which is the fourth one so we specify negative one here 
right so what this will return is that it will return the two middle numbers out of the four numbers we've gotten so i've showed you that one when we are doing we're getting the lmlc here for point uh, 12 so we can do it again if we can print lmlc at point 12 and you can see this after it will give us four numbers so let's run it and check again so that you guys will get clear understanding of what i'm talking about okay so you can see we are having four numbers right so all we need is what these two middle numbers we need 223 and 430 in this case so we have to ignore this and the first here which is the index so that's why we are performing the array slicing or the list slicing because it's in the list so we want only these two right so we can close this up and then we can get rid of this so that's typically what we are doing here and we have to do it for each of the six points we'll pass in so we'll control c and also copy it, it some number of times okay so instead of this one should be point two and then this should be y2 then x2 also so we'll go ahead and do for all of this so i'll speed it up here and i'll be back when i'm done all right guys so this is what we went, i went ahead and did i've just extracted the two values into so for the first point here which is point one we call it s1 s2 the second is s1 s y1 the second is x2 y2 so i did it for the six of them and now we are getting only those two values for each point here so since we are working with six points we extract them into six separate variables we have two variables on each line for each point right so with this done we can now go ahead and find the angle so we are going to find the angle between 16 14 and 12 so the angle will be on 14 because that's, that's where you are going to bend like this or like that so the angle will be at 14 and when you come to this hand the angle will be at 13 so that's what we are going to do now and with a little bit of math we can just find this angle so we'll find it for the left and the right hands so for that what we will say is that we are finding the left angle and this is equal to the we we'll use the math library here math dot degrees then in the here we find what math dot ethan of our points so first we will find what y3 we will take point y3 we have to subtract y2 from it so y2 and also we have to take the x3 and subtract x2 from it so x3 we subtract x2 from it right then after this we subtract this from math dot ethan again then here we want to subtract y1 we want to subtract y2 from y1 then also we subtract x1 x2 from x1 give a break here so that we can see it well right so this is how you can find the angle between the three points so let's say if it's point 16 14 and 12 that's how you can just find the angle at point 14 with this math right so to do it for both hands we just copy this paste it and just change the value so instead of left angle here should be what right angle right angle and then we'll change the point so here should be y6 minus y5 y5 then the next is x6 
minus x5 do it now when we come here we subtract y y4 we subtract y5 from it then the last one x4 then we have to subtract x5 from it okay so this is how straight away we'll get our angles so I think we can just come down here and print our angles so we we'll print right angle and the left angle so with this we can get our angle values and now what we'll do is that we have printed it so we can come down here and just call our method so the name is what the name we've given it here is angle finder so we can just call angle finder then we can assign it to something like angle angles is equal to angle finder then we can come down here and write angles dot find dot angle so that means in this case we are calling this method here so that we will get our angle but our angle finder here takes in some parameters which we have to provide we can see here we first give it the lm list then the six points then the draw so we'll specify our lm list here and we'll give it point one so the first point is 11 the second point is 13 and the third is 15 then for the other hand we give it 12 we give it 14 and then we give it 16 also then the next one is the draw so we can say draw is equal to 1 for now it will not do anything yet all we want to see now is our angle so since we are printing it when we run this we, we should see it under here that okay we are getting our angle values so I just run this to check so you can see we are having two values 150 something and 200 and something so that's the angle and once I'm raising my hand you can see the angle is changing so for both hands is changing so that's how we, we need it now you can see it's changing when I bring it down the value changes right so that's how we can get our angle but now you can see these angles are out of range so we have to be able to maybe convert it from this values to maybe 0 to 100 you can see 164 and so on is fluid too so we have to convert it to integer perform some casting on it then i think we have to convert them from the range of 0 to 100 so let's go ahead and do that so i can bring this down then when we come here what we will do is i will call the left angle And we we'll said it's equal to np dot. So we use numpy to do that. np dot intep. Okay, so this takes the starting range. So that means when we are raising and up and down, what is the range we are getting? So I went ahead and did this. So the starting range for the left hand is 170, negative 170. To 180 then we give it the new range we want it to be so we want it to be from 100 to 0 because it's inverted by default okay and also what are we converting to those values we are converting our left angle so we have to specify it here that okay we are converting our left angle from the range of negative 170 to 180 to 100 uh, from the range of this to the range of this right so we'll do this for both hands so we'll do it one for the right hand too so i'll just copy this come down and paste and instead of uh, left we replace here with right 
this bag the same thing here right and for the right angle we have different values so it starts from negative 50 and it ends as 20 then the same 100 to 0 so we can bring the print statement somewhere at the down here I think I can clear this somewhere at the down here so that when we run this now we can see the range will change from 0 to 100 for both angles instead of 0 to 360 because angle is from 0 to 360 right so we've changed this now so let's go ahead and run it and see if it works okay so you can see we are having floating numbers because we haven't converted it to integer so i'll just go ahead and convert them to integer and rerun this so here we can convert everything to integer close it up here we perform the same thing here and we have to close it up here too so let's run this again to check okay so on a race you can see when the hand is up we are getting 100 when you bring it down we are getting values values down to zero so this is how it will work when it passes some threshold then we assume okay the user have raised the hand so we have to mark or we have to add to the score when the hand is coming down and it is down to a certain threshold then we know okay you have completed one uh, dumbbell shoulder up so we have to give you a score so that's how we are going to do it so i'll close it up but first we need to draw because we are taking in draw here so if the user specified that okay we should draw then we have to go ahead and draw the circles and the lines on the body so what we'll do here is that we, we can come down instead of printing we can comment printing now and come down here and we say maybe if draw or that we self dot draw points should we say is equal to true right so if this is true then we have to go ahead and draw circles on the body so for each body we will draw two circles so that it will make it very nice and attractive so i think we should go by cv2.circle we give it our image then we have to give it the points on which we want to draw the circle so we we'll draw on each point x1 and x1 and x2 which are the first two points so which are the first two points here so we are going to draw a circle for each point here point 14 point 12 and we'll do two two for each so that it looks nice and then we'll specify our color here or our radius so the first radius let's give it 10 and then the color will be yellow so yellow Two five five, two five five. Height. Then the last parameter, which is the thickness, let's give it five. Okay. So this is for the first point, and we'll do this for the same point. We just increase our radius to make it nice. So for the same point, the thickness here should be six, and our radius should be fifteen. And that's for the that point. We'll do it for the second point so i'll copy here come down and paste i think there is enough space here. so instead of x1 x2 we'll do it what x2 y2 so here should be y not x y that should be y1 right y1 y1 x1 y1 x1 y1 then x2 y2 x2 y2 
right so this for the first and the second point and we have to do this for all the points so i can copy these two again and paste it and just change the x and y values so here should be x3 y3 same here and same here four four so i'll go ahead and speed this up okay so we are done for all the points we are just drawing circles on all the points we are using so far and now that the circle is done we have to go ahead and draw the lines to the line have to connect each and every point but i think we can run it here to see whether our circle is well drawn because we have specified draw to be true so by default it's true here so if it's true then we should get this drawn so let's check whether it's working fine then we'll come down and draw our lines wow so you can see when i raise myself for all the points we are going to use we have circles on them right so that's nice but i think we need to change the second color for the circles so, so i'll go ahead and do that so let's make that color green so for that i'll just change all the second values to zero so let's say okay so we can run this again to check whether the color has changed successfully and come forward okay so you can see our color has changed now it's left with one point or uh, two points they are still on change so let's work for those points and make it work so i would think i'll close it now which point is that so the problem is we have x1 y1 x1 y1 here we have x2 y2 x2 y2 x3 y3 we have it twice for four by the five and six we have only one version of them so i think we need two of these two then when we come here we also need another circle for the six point this one is green so this one should be back to 255 so that we get our yellow and 10 and 15 we do the same for this one too so here should be 15 and here should be green so i think this will solve our issue let's give it a try okay so i raise my hand and you can see we have all the points so these are the six points we are going to work with so let's go ahead and draw the lines by default we are having the uh, post detection line so we'll get rid of the post detection now and then we'll work with our original line so i think i can close this up and when we come here let's come down for the pose we can say draw it's also equal to zero and now let's run it again so that you see what I'm talking about the pose will be gone so we are only using our own points we want to work with all right so you can see now the pose is gone we only have the points so let's go ahead and draw our own line through these points so that we can work with it so we just come here and we say cv2 dot line and in here we'll give it our image I'm sorry this is image then we'll first draw a line from x1 so x1 that's x1 to what y1 from x1 y1 then we'll send it to x2 y2 so we are drawing from one point to another then we will specify the color of the line now let's make it red then the thickness of this color let's make it 4 so this will draw a line from one point to another so let me we can also run this to confirm whether our first line is being drawn then we will go ahead and copy and paste a number of times and do it for the rest okay so Okay, we have 
the line from this hand to this hand you can see a yellow line rather unfortunate i thought it's red so let's do it let's make it a red line and then we'll do for the rest also so red here should be zero then i'll just copy and paste this some couple of times to do it for all the lines so okay so now we'll do here from what x to y2 that means from the, this point we just copy these ones here to x3 y3 then we will start from x3 y3 to the other points so here should be x4 y4 to x5 y5 and from x5 y5 we'll go to x6 y6 then we'll also draw from x1 y1 to the last point so we'll also draw from x1 y1 to the last point which is x4 to y4 so this is how the line drawing will go it will just draw from the first point to the second from the second to third then it comes to this and also draw from first point to second then second to third then we join the middle so let me just run this to confirm what i'm talking about okay so when i raise you can see we have the line through red line through all the points we are working with so you guys can if you don't like it you can get rid of the line or use the post detection line that one is up to you but i prefer it this way this one looks good so i think we'll go with this line like this so now i can close this up and the next step here now is to retain our angle so the angles we have found we have to retain it so that we can work with it so we'll retain it as a list so we'll say retain and in here since there are two we have to retain it as list so we are retaining the left angle and also the right angle okay so the retain function takes only one parameter but since we are passing in the list that's why we bring the square brackets here so that we know we are retaining a list once we have called this method here this method will give us a give us a list so how do we get that list we can come here and get that list we can say maybe angle angle is equal to this so our list will be stored in this angle which is in this case the left and the right angle so they will be stored in this variable so we can go ahead and put them into separate variables since we have put in them here what we will do is that we can say left and right that is for the left hand and the right hand this is equal to our angle which is this then we have to slice it from zero Say from zero wow going that means the two values should be split into these separate variables that's right and left so we'll print left and also print right and see what we'll get hope i'm not printing anything else okay that's fine so let's run this to see whether we'll get the right and the left angle Okay, so you can see it's 100 that means the hand is up and it's here it's reducing it's reducing it's reducing and it's all the way to zero so when you raise it it goes when you bring it down okay so we are getting the angle and everything is working fine and uh, now I think we can work with the video file from here so I have the video here instead of taking our webcam we can just specify here that we are taking the video and the name of the video is train mov which is just here so this is here this is it train the mov and now I'll run again so it's very big we need to resize it so let's go ahead and resize it i think we can do the resizing after our class in the while loop so right after taking the image, we can resize it here. You can see image is 
equal to cv two dot resize. We give it our image and now we resize it to 640 by 480. Make it very small. So let's run again and you can see okay, it's nice here. So you can see it's detecting on our video nicely. And as the hand is going up and down, you can see our numbers are also changing accordingly. So this is working fine now. So now let's go ahead and check for the score. So anytime the hand goes up and down for once, we, we add our score. For that, we have to check for both the score and the direction. So I'll close this up. And up here, we can say our score is equal to zero. We do same for direction. Is also equal to zero so we can only update this score if we have a complete hand up and down that's where we update this score so for that we have to check for direction also so we can say if our left that's the left uh, hand is greater than 90 that means if it's up and it's greater than 90 uh, degrees right so it's greater than 90 what am i writing if this is greater than 90 we have to check for both hands so and our right is also greater than 90 then we know there is hand up so let me separate this and write it nice and the right is also greater than 90 so we can do greater than or equal to to be precise so if this is the case then we have to initialize our direction right so let's check we have to also check if the direction is zero which we know is zero so if the direction is also zero which is zero so it will be true in this case then we'll add our score so we can say score that score plus equals 0.5 this is equal to we already have because we want the person to lift up and down before we give one so when you are up when you come before you give one so we'll give half when you are above the threshold and we'll give half when you are below the threshold okay so that's how we we'll check and give and then after giving the um, score we have to revert our direction so we'll come here and say okay now direction is equal to zero or is equal to is previously zero so it's equal to one right and we are not done so we have to also check for the lower threshold so for the lower threshold we can say if our left is also less than or equal to so let's make it 70 and the same right for the right is also less than or equal to also 70 if this is the case we also check if direction is one which we know is true because we've converted it to one here so if direction is equal to one having indented it so let's indent then we have to what add another score so you can see score plus equals one in this case and we have to change the direction again not one score should be 0 0.5 0 0.5 because we are adding half half then we give direction is equal to what zero and that's all so this is how we get our score so at the end let's print our score here score on the terminal to see tab in so let's run this to see our score in real time and you can see when it's up is 0 0.5 when it comes is 1 so it's adding half half when you are up another 1.5 so this only works with both hands 
so it's up 3.5 you are down you add another half and so on so in the video I intentionally shoot where we raise only one hand and you can see nothing happened to the score the score is still the same right okay so the score is working we close this up the final step is to put these triangles on the screen where we'll display our bar as we are raising the color we will be raising and it will change when it's full and also display the score on the screen so that's the last step for us so we can get rid of this print and then let's tab in we come here and we will draw so we can say cv2 dot rectangle our image and the next thing is the starting point so we want to put this rectangle at 0, 0.0 and then we want it to go all the way to 120 so this all these points i have played with before i've gotten them if the positions are not well for you or they are not good for you you can just go ahead and change them yourself then we want the color to be red that's blue so 255,0,0 well, this should be in its own parenthesis and the thickness you want it to be filled so it's a negative one then we'll go ahead and put the score on this rectangle so we say cv2 dot put text So we want to put this text on our image and then the second thing is what is the text we want to put so we want to put our score so we say string we want to put the string version of our score right and then put it at position which position so we want to put it at position 1 to 70 so 1 on the x-axis 70 on the y-axis specify the font face so we say cv2 dot font we are using a shape plane a shape plane doesn't work well most of the time so font hashe we use script simplest so this is a good font i think in my opinion you can change it and play with it then we we'll specify our scale 1.6 and then our color so as i told you earlier on i played with this to get all these stuffs working so the color let's make it red 00255 that's it the last thing i think is our thickness let's make it 6 Okay, so let's run this up to see what we are, we are getting so far our argument thickness is okay here should be 1.6 and not 1.6 let's run this again so you can see 0 0.5 1 point. so let's make this complete integer we don't want decimal places if you want you can remove it but i think integer will be and to change that is very simple you just take the int version of your string so i think we can int of score right so let's run it again okay up down then we get one up you come down before okay so it's working nicely and your reminder again this only works with the two hands so in case one hand is not correctly raised it's not going to count and that is demonstrated here you can see i raise one hand is still five one hand is still five well that's both hands so that's a quick reminder okay so now let's do the side bars so that when we are raising the hand it will simulate 
how the hand is going so, so for the side bar we have to first draw the two rectangles we need so we'll do one for the left and we'll do one for the right so we'll first go ahead and do it for the right let's say cv2 dot rectangle on our image and these points i've gotten them so i'll type them in so the first point let me check so 8 to 200 the second point we are starting from that's not 50 so it does 50 to 400 okay so these are the points we'll be using here is the color and the thickness right so let's specify the color and the color is green so 0 255.255 the last thing is the thickness so let's give it a thickness of 5 so this for the right and we need two of these two of these rectangles so that it looks nice so one will carry how our movement is going one will simulate the movement so for that one we start from 8 and we can change these values so that it moves minus 1 because we will fill it so in order to get that we need to come here and get some values to fill it so let's say right var we are doing it for the right so I'll call right var is equal to so if you remember what we have in left and right is from 0 to 100 right so we need to use the numpy function to also convert it back to our, the size of our rectang uh, rectangle right yeah rectangle <laughs> sorry rectangle so we we'll say mp dot intep then in here we are converting our right bar that's our right then we are converting it from 100 to 0 then to 400 to 200 400 to 200 so we can come down here and instead of 200 here we can just do string string of our right var and that's it so let's run this to check for that i'll put a comment here that okay we are working for the right right side or should be right hand so this the one for the right hand let's run and see okay we've got in an error rectangles string of right file they say type error function takes exactly four arguments two is given so we give it an image okay so the problem is this is a typo it should be int integer of our right value and we are giving a string so that's where the error is coming from let's check again and you can see as the hand is going up and down it's also simulating that so instead of this we can change the inside color so I think I'll close this up let's make it blue blue rather so here should be zero zero And let's run again to check okay so that's it it's not bad so let's do one for the right the left I think let's do one for the left also so for left we we'll just come here and let's see left let's give a comment left and let's just copy this and change the values so we'll put these ones here and for the left let's check the values 582 to 200 then the next one is 632 to 400 so I got these values by trying definitely so that's how I got them you guys can also change the locations if you want and the next value is 582 582 
here too. So let's also get the right file. So let's come down and instead of right var, let's get left var. This is out. I push it in. Then instead of right, we are taking left. Right, so that is it. We are taking left. In here it will be integer of left. Left var. And this will be for the other side. So we can run it to check again whether we get for the wow so this is an error the triangle is not well drawn so let's see so here it should be c32 and that will fix our error and you can see okay it's also working nicely but now they are not moving what is the problem let's solve that problem so the problem is we have inverted this originally they are from 0 to 100 and we have made it 100 to 0 so here should be from 0 to 100 and the same thing here so 0 to 100 and I think our problem will be solved now okay so you can see it's now moving well So it's working nicely now. So let's put left right on the, the beside each rectangle simulating which particular hand is working for. So we can just copy this and edit it. So for right we come here. And in this case our test will just be string of so this is for the right hand. We have to put the test R to simulate for right hand. So yeah, R for right hand and now what we have to change is the position and the font so for the position is 24 194 and I've checked this beforehand 24 194 instead of this we can say we want to place let's check for the scale is 1 and then that, that's it we can change the font to, to five that would be nice so we'll do one for the left two let's copy this and we do one for the left so we see this is the left and that's it it also have its own position so for the left is zero four and the next position is 195 so let's run this up so we have left right and left right so this is working nicely but we can change the color at least let's change the color to blue so all this you can change on your own if I, if I just find blue very nice in this case i'll do it for this one too and that's it okay so let's run this And we are done so this is working nicely right left okay so now what you have to do for the last part is that maybe if this color crosses some threshold it should change so if the blue gets to 50% of it the color to change to red so right it will be at least nice in my opinion so you can close this up and do that so for that we have to invert our uh, left and right values again then we can just use it for the color values so what i'll do is i can come here down here and i'll say value left and we add variable value left and what we'll do is come and copy np.interp here I'm just paste it here but instead of 0 to 100 right we'll convert it to 0 to 100 again and we do same for the right one also let 
it should be five here. Value right. Okay, so this is done. So what we can do is that we can just use some conditional statement to put that on. That if these values are above certain threshold, then we just change the color. So I think we can come here and we say if value left is greater than let's say seventy percent, so it's greater than greater than equal to seventy. Then we want the color to change the color of its rectangle, which is value left. So this is the value left rectangle. We just copy it here, and instead of this, we want it to be red. So let's make this zero and run this and check if it works. We do for the other hand too. So you can see when it's up, the color changes to red. So this is working. We can go ahead and do it for the other one. Let me just copy this. Tab in. Value left. We do value right. Actually value. Value right. And for right, we have its rectangle here. So we can replace this one here. So okay, let's give it a try. Okay, the right is not changing. What is the problem? Is this three okay it's still blue? I haven't changed that, my bad. So here will be zero and here will be two fifty five. So this is working fine now. Everything is working fine, but I think I have to change the red, uh, blue color here to green. So let's do that. It's not nice, blue, blue. I think, in my opinion, you guys can change it when you like. So where is it? Okay, so we want it to be green. So here should be zero. And I'll do it for both sides. And let's run this again. Still doesn't change. Wow. Oh, okay. The problem is we don't have to change it here. So we have to change it here to 255. And here should be zero. We do same for the right hand. Two five five and zero. Okay, I think it's working now nicely. Okay, this is nice. This is nice. So guys, this is how it works. Everything is working just fine and it's counting. As soon as the hand is up and down, so I think this is good. For now, with the number of lines of code with rating, it's not that much, but we are able to achieve all this. So that's the power of computer vision and Python. I think we have to try it on live camera where I'll raise my hand to see how it works. So I'll close this one up now. And instead of the video file here, what is it? I'll put the camera in this which is zero and run it again to use my own hand to see whether it works okay so here is it okay that's one that's two and this is working just nice so I think everything works it's working nicely if you raise one hand nothing happens raise this nothing happens with both hands that's it okay, so guys this work great and as usual i'll put the code on my github so that you guys can have access to so thanks for tuning in hope you've learned something new don't forget to turn the notification icon on subscribe and share with your friends so thanks for hanging around once more i'll see you right in the next tutorial bye